Hey guys, it's Kelly and welcome back to my channel. Check out what's behind me. It is the brand new 2023 Toyota Sequoia, completely redesigned. And I am so excited because I've been driving this thing for a week as a mom of three, and I am ready to share my thoughts. If this is your first time joining me, hey, I'm Kelly and I'm the car mom. I review cars for moms and their families. I'm a mom and I'm a certified child passenger safety tech. There are a ton of Toyota Sequoia tours out there on YouTube and they cover everything you'd ever wanna know about this vehicle. However, my tours, I keep it a little bit more laser focused on just the family friendliness of this car. So we're gonna talk about mom's comfort features, dad's comfort features, third row access, car seat, trunk space, storage, and the things that families who would be in the market for a full size SUV would need to know. I know people love this car. And I drove one for a week. I know people. Why, I know why people would love this car. But what I want to share today is: Is it really a family-friendly full-size SUV? Let's get started. <laughs> Toyota has redesigned the Sequoia for 2023. And guys, this exterior, I'm stunning is what it is. It is meaty, it is muscular, it is demanding, and I think it looks honestly stellar. It is not a tissue box on wheels. It has some beautiful curves, some beautiful lines, some gorgeous elements. I love the exterior, I really do. Um, it also came with a hybrid powertrain. Wow, that's fun, that's something different. And what that means is it's going to apparently get better fuel economy. The window sticker claims to get up to 22 on the highway. I have been testing this thing for a week and I reset the MPGs often, especially on long stretches of highway, and I've never cleared over 20. So it's still, it's still good fuel economy. However, you know, in the summer using the air conditioning, I'm not getting close to 22. I'm getting around 19.5-ish on a good day. Okay, taking a look at the side profile. I mean, again, so just like meaty and muscular. Look at the beautiful 20-inch wheels. I mean, take a look at these giant mirrors. These are the only things. I mean, I like a big car, don't get me wrong. These seemed a little extra. They are like huge it kind of looks like a Dodge truck mirror. I don't know, not the biggest fan. Moving on to the rest of the car, we do have running boards, power running boards, which is good because this is a big freaking car. Um, roof rails up there as well. I'm loving like the black out around, especially against a silver vehicle. I think like this color combo is just gorgeous. Okay, and now let's take a look at the trunk back here. So one thing that I've seriously noticed while driving this car for a week is just how small this back glass is. It is not the biggest back windshield, um, and it did affect my visibility just a little bit, especially with the car seat, which I'll get to in a little bit. But besides that, just from an aesthetic standpoint, I think the back end looks great. I'm loving the blue in this Toyota logo, the Sequoia, of course, double spaced out here. And overall, I mean, I've said it once, I'll say it a hundred times, the exterior is stunning. So now let's get into the interior. We're gonna talk about some of the mom features, some of the comfort features, and most importantly, we're gonna get to that car seat setup. I mean, the car's super, super, big and comfortable. Like I actually love how I am. I actually love the feeling of it from the driver's seat. And this Platinum specifically has so many insane features. Let's start by breaking down this door panel because this is where a lot of the storage kind of makes or breaks a car, right? So it's, pr it's pretty simple. I mean, we have a little bit of blue contrast stitching right here. Um, obviously all of our power windows right here and our auto folding mirrors because like for mirrors that big, they need to auto fold. We have two way memory seats and then we have some cup holders and some side cubbies as well. This is a Stanley 30 ounce ice flow. Does not pass the cup holder test right there. So those cubbies are more for like your smaller water bottles, like your more shallow things, maybe like a wallet, some tissues, things like that. Um, so it's nice that we have something, wish they were a little bit deeper, but that's me being picky. But let me get you on the other side and we'll talk about some more of the features. I mean, this Platinum, you guys, has all of the features, but at $79,000 and some change, I would expect a lot of nice bells and whistles. So we do have heads up display. I love that so I can see my direction, how fast I'm going, the speed limit, all that information displayed on the windshield. And then I'm gonna move down into my digital dash display where it's showing me a lot of great information. It's full color, it looks great. And then I go down to my steering wheel controls where I have everything from my Bluetooth, the things for my automated cruise control. So let's quickly just talk about the infotainment system. So Toyota, what they did is they made it big. I mean, take a look at the size of the screen. It is super large. It's very easy to use. It's, it's pretty, it's full color. Like I have, I have no grievances, I think it's nice. Here's something that I wasn't expecting to love so much and that is how freaking big these buttons are but in a way where it's actually like so easy to do what you need to do, which I know sounds specific, but in some of these newer cars, like even my Ford Expedition, for example, because the climate control is all like shoved into the screen or it's so hard to find or it's small, you just don't realize how much you miss like a physical button or even more like a physical toggle. I mean, look how easy it is to quickly turn up and down the air conditioning. I also loved this and I know this sounds crazy, but I challenge you to find this in other cars and just it's crazy how much harder this is. Rear, oh, that's all you have to do. Now I'm controlling the rear air. Now I'm not. Now I am. Now I'm not. 
I mean, that's every mother's dream. Like, it, not to like compare it to my expedition so many times, but like in my expedition, it's a three-step process to change the rear air. This is nothing, rear air. I love these. Didn't know how much I liked these until I had them for a week. I think they're awesome. Heated seats, ventilated seats, wireless charger, auto hold, parking brake, and then we've got some really nice cup holders as well. So we have two cup holders up here. So huge and kind of a lot going on. It's nice and wide and it's got like built in dividers almost. USB and USB-C in there. And then we also have some additional storage in the top of the center console as well. I mean, this is like so small. Like I literally don't know what you even put there, but it's there. I also love that this kind of gives me like a built in armrest. Like it's up high enough to make me feel like I have armrest, which again, kind of unique in some of these cars. And then we have two more cup holders on the back as well. And one thing about me is I love four cup holders in a driver's reach. I think all cars should have four cup holders in driver's reach because why? If you've been here a while, you know, I have today's iced coffee, my water, yesterday's iced coffee, yesterday's water. Like I need that kind of flexibility in my life. I mean, just think if my husband was here and he wanted to bring a beverage, like I need at least four cup holders. Let's take a look at this rear view camera. So as you know, this is your rear view mirror. However, when you're carrying passengers or in the Toyota Sequoia's case, a car seat may be in the third row, it's gonna greatly affect your visibility. So they have this built-in camera that will give you an unobstructed view of what's actually behind you. We'd love to see it. All right, y'all, here I am in the second row of the Toyota Sequoia. Let's start talking about how well your kids are actually gonna fit back here, right? Now this car, again, it's a full-size SUV. So it has a really spacious second row and a really spacious third row as you would expect for a car of this size. Starting with my second row legroom, I mean, check this out. This seat is set for myself at about six feet tall. I'm honestly maybe more comfortable back here than I even was in the driver's seat. I have so much legroom, so much headroom, great amenities like this nice leather back pocket, heated seats and ventilated seats back here on this platinum trim. I have USB, USB-C, my climate control, vents down here and up here, which I'm actually really appreciating for that kind of like all that airflow. I like that I have kind of the, the dual the dual air vents, I guess. Um, and then on our door panel, we've got built-in sunshades as well. Awesome. Same kind of side cubby that we had up there. It's not the deepest, but it's pretty wide on the side cubbies. So now the Toyota Sequoia comes in both a bench seat and a captain's chair. So we're talking about either a seven or an eight passenger car. These are the captain's chairs, and the captain's chairs are honestly the more common seat, seating setup that you're going to find. I have not been able to lay eyes on a bench seat yet. I would love to, if anyone's listening from Toyota. I have so many thoughts on the bench seat that I would love to be able to explore. All right, so this car for older passengers, for adults, second row smacks. Let's quickly talk about the car seat setup. The Toyota Sequoia car seat setup. For as many pros as this car has, this is a major, major con if you have three or more car seats. Um, if you have three or more car seats, this is not the vehicle I would buy, and I'm going to explain why. So in the captain's chairs, we have two sets of lower anchors and two tethers. Captain's chairs, check out, we kind of find that across the board. In the third row of the Sequoia, they have one tether anchor, and you need tether anchors for forward-facing car seats. And they put that one tether anchor in the middle seat. There are no lower anchors under the third row, which kind of already shocked me. But to only have one tether and to only put in the middle seat is such a big miss from Toyota. And here's why. Having a car seat in that middle seat greatly affects your visibility out the back. It is almost impossible to see anything because the only spot you can put that car seat is in the middle. Okay, another reason why I don't like that top tether in the middle is because the car, a car seat's pretty wide, right? Like that middle seat doesn't fit the car seat great. So it kind of affects your ability to put someone comfortably next to the car seat on either side. I would have so much rather, Toyota, please, had them put the tether anchors on the outboard seats. If that was the case, I would feel so much better about this vehicle in general. You basically can't put four car seats in this car is what I'm telling you, which for a full SUV, I feel like you should be able to. Okay, so I've been driving this car for about five days with my kids, but unfortunately, due to carpool today, I had to take two of my kids' car seats out of this car. So I only have one still installed, and that is my youngest son's. This is the Kleck Ling installed rear facing, and I mean, check out that clearance. All right, third row access. You hit this lever right here. I call this the flip and fold. I call it slightly dramatic, but I mean, check out this third row axis. It literally even has steps going into the third row. One of the things I don't like about this kind of third row access is then you do have to have either yourself or the child pull this down, click it into place, and then pull this back up. So what's interesting about the Sequoia, What's interesting about the Sequoia is these second row seats are actually not on track. So you cannot move these forward or backwards to give the third row more leg room. However, you can move the third row 
forward or backwards for more leg room. But what that means is you lose your trunk space. So I actually would have rather had these seats on tracks instead of the third row seats or in a perfect world, both of them. Um, but yeah, that's kind of an interesting, an interesting concept. If you look right here, cup holders, a little storage cubby. I like the cup holders, like for the second row passengers. I do think that can make it a little bit more difficult to access the third row for those people who are trying to like, you know, shove back there. They might like step and trip on something. So I don't know, I'm kind of torn on these. Like I like the easy access. I don't like that, what that does to the third row access. Let me know in the comments below what you think of that feature. All right, here we are in the third row of the Sequoia. Here's my knee clearance. So this is with this seat pushed all the way back, as you can see. So I'm giving myself the least amount of trunk space, the most amount of leg room, and I, I think this is good. I feel like compared to the other cars in its class, this is a good amount of leg room. I love that I have my own little sunshades back here, two cup holders, um, my ceiling vents, a little hook, and these seats can recline a bit for a little bit more comfort, but don't recline too much because then your seatbelt might not fit correctly. So overall, I think the third row is actually pretty comfortable. Again, what gets weird though is like if you want more trunk space, completely doesn't work. This doesn't work for anybody. Like let alone a six foot tall woman, I'm telling this doesn't work for anybody. Okay, for them to get out, there's these little red tabs right here. Pull it and the whole thing flies open. It's actually pretty easy to do. It kind of does it automatically. And then we just climb right out. Okay, the trunk, you guys. I mean, this is the trunk place we're left with. Insane, so tiny. Honestly upset about it because like, not, don't even wanna put a person here. Like we need more trunk, Toyota, we need more trunk space. At least like a little bit more. I mean, this is crazy, right? So here's what they've done though, which hey, this is fun. This is fun. Do this with a bigger trunk. You know what I mean? I like the shelf. I think the shelf is cool and I actually used this and I thought it was actually pretty user friendly. I was able to put like two levels of groceries. I thought it was fun. These little things you can remove so you can like kind of DIY some dividers, which is kind of fun and unique. And then we've already talked about, here we go, how we can move this trunk space more forward if you need more room. Now, that's decent. I think people are a little frustrated with though how it's still not like completely flat I mean that kind of works then you just like have like these little different crevices I don't know this feels good to me I would be happy if this was the trunk space because this is basically what is it what's in my expedition what's in a Tahoe like this feels more standard it's the this that I just can't stand I just don't and I don't understand how so many smaller cars have such have the same amount of leg room and are so much smaller and have more trunk space like I, the math isn't mathing okay so now let's put these seats down right so it's power, it's a press and release, which I do really appreciate that. As you can see, this seat belt comes from the ceiling, so I probably could have taken that off. Here's what the trunk space looks like. You guys can see it's not completely flat, right? Um, I think I'd like it flat. Now, here's what Toyota's done, though. You can put your shelf in here. You can flip these things over. Now it's kind of flat. But I still feel like I wouldn't want to put, like my dog back here or I don't know there's just something I don't love about this I do appreciate this underneath storage so maybe I do like it I guys I'm kind of torn let me just be honest with you I'm kind of torn besides size I know we don't like the size does this not folding flat bother you are you like happy with the shelf system do you think this is cool that it does this I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments below so thank you guys so much for tuning in to my Toyota Sequoia tour guys I'm feeling just Meh. I mean, I know people love it and like I get it like it's a hybrid. It's got that incredible Toyota reliability It's good looking. It drives great. The technology is good. I just feel like for the price and the size I was expecting a little bit more room for family. I guess that's what it comes down to I mean, it's a big car and I've sat in third rows that have more legroom with bigger trunk spaces that are a lot smaller than this So anyway, those are my thoughts. Let me know in the comments below what you think and I'll see y'all next time